These are practice exercises from page 406 and 408 in the textbook dealing with uh, root mean squared speeds and ratios of fusion and diffusion. So the first question asks us for the RMS, root mean squared, speed of an atom in a sample of helium gas at 25 degrees C. So what's important is that this is helium and this is the temperature. The equation that we're going to use is pretty straightforward. So our root mean squared speed is equal to the square root of 3 times r times t over m, or m is the molar mass of the substance, so in this case helium. Now something we do need to pay attention to is that in this case r is going to be a slightly different value than we're used to. And the reason for that, since we're trying to get a speed out, the speed is going to be in units of meters per second, so we need to pick a unit of r that gives us meters per second. So if you look in your textbook, they show you how to kind of derive this unit. Essentially what we're doing is we're trying to get it into units of joules, since we know that joules can be broken down further since, again, a joule is equal to a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So the value of R that we're going to use is R equals 8.314 kilogram meter squared per second squared mole Kelvin. So again, a lot of units in there, but you can essentially see that because we're taking a square root, it makes sense that the meters are squared and the second is squared. We're going to need to cancel out the kilogram, we're going to need to cancel out the mole, and we're going to need to cancel out the Kelvin. So in order to do this, that means that temperature is going to need to be in Kelvin. So instead of 25 degrees C, we're going to need to put that as 298.15 Kelvin. And then for M, for the molar mass of this gas, instead of writing it as 4 grams per mole, we're going to write that in kilograms per mole. And the reason that I know it's 4 is because I know I've got helium, so if I check the periodic table there, the molar mass of helium is right around 4. And again, we need that in kilograms per mole so that our units cancel. So 4.0 times 10 to the negative third kilograms Per mole. So we can just plug in all of those numbers and our root mean square speed be equal to the square root of 3 times 8.314 kilogram meter squared per second squared mole Kelvin times 298.15 Kelvin, all of this is still under that square root sign, divided by our molar mass, which again is going to be in units of kilogram per mole. So if we watch our units cancel out here, we can see that the kilograms are going to go, Kelvin is going to go, moles are going to go. It's going to leave us with meter squared over second squared, but since we're taking the square root of our answer, we're going to be left in units of just meters per second. And for this problem, we're going to get an answer rounded to three significant figures of 1.36 times 10 to the third meters per second. So this should seem very fast. And that makes sense because we know that gas particles are moving at very, very high speeds. That's part of the kinetic molecular theory. And since this is a very small gas molecule, so helium is pretty small, pretty small molar mass, it makes sense that this is moving quite quickly. Okay, so let's look at the second problem here. It says calculate the ratio of effusion rates of N2 gas and O2 gas. So we've got another equation that we can use to calculate this. Again, it makes sense the way that these rates are related because we know that the more massive a gas is, the slower it's going to move. So notice that I've got rate 1 over rate 2 is the square root of the mass of the second one over the mass of the first one. The reason for this, again, is that the rate is inversely proportional to the mass. As the molecule gets larger, its rate is going to slow down. So if we just plug in what we know, so this means that the rate of N2 to the rate of O2 is going to be equal to the square root of the mass of O2, which is going to be 32 grams per mole, over the mass of N2, which is 28. Again, notice that this is double what's in the periodic table because these are diatomic gases. The units are going to cancel out, so we're going to be left with a unitless answer. 
So our ratio is just going to be 1.07. And again, this answer is reasonable. Those masses are very close, 32 grams per mole and 28 grams per mole. In addition to the numbers being very close, we're also taking the square root. So again, these two gases are going to have very similar effusion rates, so it would be kind of difficult to separate them based on their rates of effusion. If they had more difference in their masses, one was much more massive than the other one, then we really could separate them based on their rates of effusion, based on their masses. But in this case, very similar molecular weights means a very similar effusion rate for our two substances.